Hey everybody, happy Sunday, and welcome to the live edition of The Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing, and we're keeping it very casual today, and I'll explain a little bit why, but in this, in this Sunday, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to everybody, just chat about sewing and what it means to you, what it's brought to your life, and also some other really random stuff that I just wanted to talk about. So if you're joining me live, Thank you. If you're watching the replay, also thank you. And I'm just going to address it right now. I'm having a really terrible hair day. So I apologize, but I just needed to get it out of my face. If you are watching, let me know where you're watching from and make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and if you'd like to be notified about all of these live shows. I try to do one every Sunday at 3 p.m. And you may have noticed there was not a regular video on Thursday. I usually try to post on Thursdays, but this week we did have a bit of a family emergency. So James and I have been out of town. We just got back, but last week I said I was gonna do these shows every week and I wanted to stay true to that. So here I am. And again, thank you if you're watching. And I just wanted to take, I just wanted to talk about sewing, but also, so I had a thought, so I'm also, I think every week I'm gonna share, like during the week I usually have a few videos that I find on YouTube that are just really cool and informative or helpful. So I think in every live show, I'm also gonna link some videos that um, I found this week just to, just to share them because they're very cool. So the first video is by Evie Lulu. Obviously I'm a fan because I have made her lingerie patterns before and she made a video this week about like kind of an introduction to swimwear video and she's talking about how a lot of her patterns can actually be converted. They can be used for swimwear if you use the right materials and do some things. So the video is linked in the description box and she talks about and she's really she's very good at explaining things. I love her tutorials. So if you're interested in making swimwear but you're not really sure where to start, I think her video is a really good primer on what you need to know. And the other video I just found this morning, in full disclosure, I've actually never used spoon flower before. I know like everybody else has except me, but spoon flower is a fabric website where you can get custom printed fabric. They have all different kinds of substrates. The prices are a little bit higher, but it's because you're custom printing each piece of fabric. So Spoonflower has this really neat blog post and tutorial on how you can take like handwritten recipes, and I, this could actually apply to about anything. You can take handwritten recipes and, uh, and basically take them and print them onto linen fabric for tea towels, which I think is a really cool concept. And actually, hold on one second. I'm actually just gonna go on my I'm at my computer, I'm in my bedroom, obviously there's a TV behind me, and a door with no trim, but let's try to ignore that. And I wanna log in on my computer just so I can see your comments as well because it's kind of hard to see on this iPod that I'm using. Um, yeah, I know this is, this is a little low rent, but you know, it is what it is, right? So I'm just going to get into the video on my computer so I can see your comments or questions if you have any. So, and again, thank you very much for tuning in to the 14 people watching right now. All right, and here we go. And yeah, if you have a question or if you want to comment, there's a comment box. The comments don't save, um, but also if you're watching the replay, those comments do save. So again, thank you for watching. And let's talk about, oh, so yeah, so the second video on Spoonflower is basically this tutorial where they, they show you how to use Adobe Photoshop and you can get like, say you have your grandmother or your mother's written handwritten recipes, you can scan them and then get them printed onto the, the linen fabric and make tea towels out of it, which I think is a really great gift idea for like Mother's Day or for someone else in your life that maybe has some very sentimental things handwritten by a loved one that they don't want to like get messed up like obviously you don't want to continue using like the handwritten recipe cards because over time they might deteriorate but you can scan them and get them printed onto the fabric and make items out of it which I thought was a really neat neat idea so I'm actually interested in doing that um, but really this episode 
I know this is this is a bit random, but I really wanted to talk about our experiences with sewing because I've been sewing for about four four years now, and it's just been one of the best things I've ever chosen to do. Um, I didn't know I was going to like sewing, and my my real experience with sewing was very limited as a child. My mother sewed a little bit, and she like knitted and crocheted, and my grandmother did it quite a bit. But my grandmother and I never really did it together, so she would make me things like she would crochet me an afghan. I remember for some sort of school thing, she made me like a 50s, like a, one of those 50s outfits with like the, with like the circle skirt with a poodle on it, like a 50s girl type outfit. Um, but she and I never really sewed together. Um, and I, as an adult, I really regret not learning from her because my grandma was actually pretty good at it. Um, but again, we never really did things together. So um, I do regret as an adult missing out on, really missing out on learning from her because she was very talented and she made a lot of really nice things. But you know, once someone's gone, that knowledge is lost. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is that everyone has value and brings value to the table. And if you have the opportunity to learn from someone with more life experience than you, don't waste it. Take advantage of it because time and life is so short and you want to make sure that if you have someone in your life that you think is very talented, knows how to do a lot of things, have them teach you how to do it. Because the thing I love about sewing is how communal it is. You can sew alone or you can sew with a group, you can sew with your family members, but it's something that historically has been passed down from generation to generation. You know, moms or grandmothers teaching, teaching daughters or sons, and it's something that, that people tend to do, you know, as a family thing. So I think that's one of the reasons I really like sewing and like what it has to offer us as a community. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, just what kind of benefits sewing has uh, to me and you and anyone else who tries it. It's such a great, rewarding, productive activity, and it's a great skill to have too. Making your own things is something that I really value, and James and I as a couple really love making our own things. We would really vastly prefer to make something or like, you know, execute an idea in our head than it is to buy something. It's just so much more rewarding, isn't it? So we just love doing it and and he actually sews too. He actually taught me how to sew, if you didn't know that already. So he taught me how to use the sewing machine uh, because I had no clue. But if there is someone in your life that sews, you know, if you are younger and your grandmother is a really great seamstress, be sure, don't waste this time, be sure to have her teach you what she knows. Um, James and I have been talking a lot this week. It's been a bit of a rough week for personal reasons, but uh, you know, we were, we've been ha able to have some really um, in-depth conversations that have been very, um, very good to have and very meaningful. And one of the things he told me was that, you know, you don't, why learn the hard way? You know, like I guess his grandfather used to always tell him, you know what? You always want to learn things the hard way because he didn't want to listen to his grandfather. But I think the thing that, I, that I'm coming to grasp is that if someone has more life experience than you, you should ask them about something. If you're going through something that you've never gone, for, for, gone through before, you should ask somebody who has because you won't have to take nearly as long to figure out what to do. And they might know the answer. They might know how you can solve a problem or figure out a situation because they've done it before. So I think that's something that's really important to do. And also to someone who has children or grandchildren, um, definitely take the time to try and connect with them and teach them some of the skills you've learned throughout your lifetime because it would be very valuable to them as a younger person. And I'm sure and they might, not, they might not appreciate it if they're a child or a teenager, but when they are an adult, they will very much cherish that time and the experiences they had with you. Because I know I do with my mother and grandfather, and I know James has with his own family. So 
I just, I, I don't know why I'm rambling, but that's just something that I've, I'm really having like a lot of realizations about that this week. So anyways, if you're here, thank you very much. And again, feel free to, feel free to chime in. Um, if you do so, who taught you? I want to know. Um, and I do have some questions for you guys because I want this place to be a forum where we can share our experiences and answers. Oh, hi, I'm Gilbert. Long last, hey, Marie in Ireland. Wow, Ireland, I don't even know, I don't even know what time it is there, but thank you so much for being part of the live show. So that's awesome. And let's see, Tash Tashia, you kind of taught me in a way I did. Wow. Well, I'm very flattered. Um, Hopefully, hopefully you, uh, hopefully you, you haven't found any of this confusing, but that's awesome. Wow, it is, wow, 2016, so it's kind of late at night. And Lisa J from Seattle, sewing means to me it is a creative outlet and a great stress relief for me. And I totally agree. That's pretty much why I love it so much is because it's just a way for you to kind of unplug, recharge. You can focus on something and it just really allows you to I don't know, almost to like escape from things. Like it's it's a form, of, I think sewing is definitely a form of escapism. Not that I'm necessarily advocating like, hey, um, don't, don't, uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you, you know, just drop all of your life commitments or anything, but in a way, um, sort of like how people would go to the movies during the Great Depression, just not to think about stuff. Sewing is a great way just to get your mind off of some some things. You know, if you got some stuff going on, it's a good way to really just focus on the task, enjoy a creative outlet, and be able to just sort of, yeah, like chill, relax, you know, just get away from it all for a little bit. Ewa says, hello from England. Wow, it's uh, 2017 in the UK. And Champagne Twist is here. All right, we've got some, some European, some Europeans here. That's awesome. And Anitra's here. Okay, and you say, Anitra says YouTube and Craftsy are things that taught her too, so. Yeah, and you're right. And she also says, I love the fact that I can make something useful. So, thank you for everyone watching. Sewing requires you to engage an artistic part of your brain. What is detaching you from what is stressful and worryful thinking? That's so true. Like, if I'm stressed out or if I've had a bad day, sewing is the thing that makes me feel better and also makes me feel productive and like I'm going somewhere. Um, it's the worst to be stuck in a rut, but it's great to be able to feel like you're accomplishing something and you're making something beautiful. So again, thank you for everyone weighing in with your input. So yeah, if you're just joining us, I would love to know um, who taught you to sew, if anyone did. Was it someone in your family? Are you self-taught? And also, why do you sew and what kind of meaning do you get from sewing? Eva says, Europeans, oh yes, Central European, all right, Poland, awesome. So yeah, yeah, the hair today, I don't, this is something, I don't know, I do, I feel like I didn't condition my hair, I think I did, but anyways, it is what it is, and that's okay. All right, so Marie says, it gives you that feeling at the end that you have made something special and unique and you can't beat it, and that is so, so true. So, yes, so sewing is just... I don't know, I've never had anything like sewing in my life before, but it's just something that's brought me so much joy and so much enjoyment. And just, um, you know, I feel like I'm able to do do things now and I feel a lot more um, almost self-sufficient, I guess. I just feel like I, you know, if I can do this, I don't have to buy it. I don't have to rely on, you know, a factory in Bangladesh to make a shirt, I can make it myself. And I think that's what I really like about it. Um, and also, to everyone watching, okay, uh, Taishia says, I sew because I love the peace and quiet and to create something that is unique to anyone else. And I totally agree with that. I do the same thing. Sewing really does that. You could make your own custom things. You don't have to, you know, it's not going to look like anyone else's. No one's going to walk in wearing the same dress as you if you made it yourself. So that is awesome. And I, every, to everyone out there, I really appreciate your, your input. I also want to ask this question. If... You have someone else in your family that sews or quilts or knits or crochets. Um, has that brought to you together in, in any way? And if so, how? Like what? Um, I'd love to hear some of your experiences with your mother, your grandmother, your sister, or your aunt, anyone in your life 
that may have introduced you to sewing or someone in your life that you've introduced to sewing because I think that's very important. All right, Eva said, okay, Marie says, I'm self-taught, come from a long line of knitters, but no sewers. I kind of love being self-taught too. Such a sense of achievement after loads of blunders. We've all had those blunders. Don't worry about it, Marie. Ewa says, my gran sewed for us dresses from Berta, never ready-made clothing, a freeze you so well. We are curvy women. My mom sew at home, but gets mad when we break needles. Still have this machine. That's awesome. And Champagne Twist says, I used to be in a job where we had to wear boring dark suits. Ugh, that doesn't sound very fun. Now I can wear bright colors and prints, and the clothes fit me because I made them suit myself. And that's the purpose of sewing, is to make things that, that we love. Eva says, my grandma taught me and uh, to cross-stitch. And Taishia says, I have an aunt that sews, but I didn't realize she sewed until I was already sewing. Wasn't well, that kind of a, you know what, at least you've got something to talk about now. That's awesome. And Champagne's Twist says, sewing is such a great creative outlet. And so much more fun than clothes shopping. Yeah, going to the mall, for me, has no appeal. It's something I did as a teenager. I, for some reason, found it fun then, but as an adult... Going to the mall is a very stressful experience for me. I don't find it at all enjoyable. And it just, I don't know, I could i could really take it or leave it. I haven't been to a mall in about a year, and I have no regrets about that. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for sharing your thoughts. But yes, so if you're just joining us, we are talking about what sewing means to you. And I just love, you know, and that's the thing. I want to know, I love this community, and I just want to know everyone else's experience. I think this is a great way, this is a great place where we can share our experiences and some of our memories and also uh, introductions to sewing. All right, so Marie says, absolutely right on the last comment, Champagne Twist. I detest shopping, except for fabric shopping. And yes, fabric shopping is very fun. So again, this is a great conversation we're having and this has been really fun for me. And again, I apologize that there was no video on Thursday. We will hopefully get back to our regularly scheduled videos um, this upcoming Thursday. We just were not able to um, edit the video in time, and we've been out of town. So I apologize for that. I'm trying to be as regular as I can here, but sometimes life happens, and I hope you can understand. Ewa says, sewing was like a woman's thing. We would start on Friday afternoon, um, get make food for the men, send them fishing, and Friday we make coffee and cookies and choose materials and design Grand Drew Asilla. That is awesome that you were able to sew with your grandmother. And I really regret not really being able to sew with, with mine. Um, she was a very talented lady. And, you know, as a kid, I didn't know. You As a kid, you just don't know how valuable your, your family members are. You don't appreciate them as much. And then when you're an adult like me, you have regrets about not doing things with them when you were younger. All right. Champagne Twist says yes. Fabric shopping is fab, I agree. And Marie says, this is fun for us too, Jennifer. Look how many people you have brought together from all over the world. This is awesome. And I can't believe there's people watching from like Ireland and England and Poland. Um, I have only been to London. I had a great time. Unfortunately, I've never been to any of those other places. Um, but Marie, I've heard Ireland is awesome. And I know a lot of people that have like taken honeymoons there and gone there on trips. And their pictures look amazing. So I'm a little bit jealous. Maybe someday we'll get to Ireland. I don't, I don't know. We haven't really taken a vacation. I don't think we've ever really taken a, like a flat-out vacation. We typically will go visit family members or, I don't know, like, we, we really haven't taken, like, your traditional vacation. So maybe someday we'll get to do that. Dana says, I really enjoy the sewing community on YouTube from all over the world. We are all the same. And I'm going to try to move this camera a little bit just so that it doesn't look like I'm looking away too much when I'm looking at the screen. See, so yeah, I'm in my bedroom, and the door is missing some trim, so just try to ignore that, everybody. And Vicki says, hello, Jennifer. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, Champagne Twist says, life happens when you're going fantastic, so no need to apologize. And again, thank you. Um, I've really, I've been pretty good about doing videos every week and the live show every Sunday. Um, you know, and I, and I want to make, I want to make as videos, as many videos as I can because I really like doing it. Um, and really, outside of this whole sew this sewing report um, and going to work, we really don't do a lot else. Um, James and I will work on projects around the house or together. Um, 
but we really, we really pretty, we, we're, we're real homebodies, so we don't really tend to go anywhere. Vicky asks, what is on your sewing machine at the moment? And Vicky, I'll be completely honest with you, I haven't done any sewing this week. It's been a little bit of a tough week. Uh, last week, last Saturday, I did finish a uh, top that I will be sharing on Sewing Report. And I was going to try to make a matching pair of shorts. So if I can get that done within the next week, that would be great. Um, but I did make a top out of polyester crepe. And polyester crepe was a bit tricky to sew with. So that has been, that was a little bit of a nightmare. Um, I have enough fabric left over to make like a little pair of shorts. I was going to try to make like a summery outfit. But uh, I, I'm not really looking forward to this fabric again. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully I can figure it out and get that done. Because I would like it. I think it would make a cute matching outfit. But I had a really hard time hemming the polyester crepe. It was, it was a bit of a nightmare. And uh, yeah. So if you have any tips about hemming or working with polyester crepe. Also, please feel free to weigh in. Um, because one thing about me and... and something that I'm becoming more self-aware of is that it's okay to ask for help. It's okay. To, I don't, I obviously don't know everything. And I think if you're not sure how to do something, ask somebody else who does. Don't have that pride. Don't be like, I'm not going to ask anyone. I can figure it out myself. Why learn the hard way when you can ask someone who has experience doing it? You know, it'll make your life a lot easier. Plus, it'll give you a way to connect with somebody else. So if you have problems with something, Try to find someone who knows the answer rather than you getting frustrated and, and just wanting to throw your sewing machine out the window. Alright, so Ewa says, Saturdays was always cutting and tracing. Imagine six people and each one at least four to six outfits. That's a lot of outfits. I'm impressed if you could do that in one weekend. Wow. Allison says, I want to design my own gothic clothes. Maybe a secondhand sewing machine. That would be great, Allison. And I've heard, I personally have not really, uh, I have one vintage Singer sewing machine that I got from eBay. But I know a lot of people that have gotten great secondhand sewing machines. Sometimes at really amazing deals, especially if you're at like a garage sale or an estate sale. And the family members of the person um, who owned the sewing machine, I, I don't think a lot of them know what sewing machines are worth. They may sta slap a sticker on it that says $20 and the sewing machine is worth $500. You have no idea. So you can find some gems at sewing machines. Vicky says, I ordered a couple patterns from Sohow 7. I can't wait to pick up fabric. Vicky, that's great. Sohow 7 has wonderful patterns. I've made two so far. The um, the toaster sweater. I made the, the number one sweater. And then the tea house dress. Really innovative patterns. Very clever design. And I thought they were very, like, tastefully done. Like, they don't, the garments didn't look homemade. They looked, like, the finishes on them were very nice. All right. Taishia, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. If not, I apologize profusely. Use the roller foot. It would make it a lot easier. Um, I'll have to look that up. I'm not very familiar with roller foots, but that sounds interesting because I had a really hard time with the hemming. And Ewa says, before Sunday, 12 dresses were made and we go to church with them. That is damn impressive. I don't know how you did it. Like, are you like, uh, I don't know, are you, like, I don't know if you, like, are you guys just super fast or something? Like, I don't, I think it would take me a year to make 12 dresses. That's, that again, color me impressed. And Vicky says, I want to make the Mississippi, Mississippi Ab dress for a class reunion. That sounds like a lot of fun. And uh, I, I'm not familiar with that one. Let me look it up real quick. Mississippi dress. So how seven. All right, I don't. I I feel like I may have seen it before, but I forgot. Oh, that's really cute. Okay, so the Mississippi dress in So How Seven. Okay, I think I have seen it. I just forgot the name. It's sort of like a V-neck dress. It comes to about the knee, and it's got like these really cute like um, ruched sleeves. Very cool. Vicky, I don't know what fabric you're, fabric you're considering doing it in, but that sounds awesome. And it's summer, so it'll be nice and flowy and, you know, keep you cool when you're when you're doing all that dancing at your reunion. I don't know what people have never been to any of my reunions, so I don't know. But uh, that sounds awesome. Marie says, that is lovely, Vicky. And yeah, Vicky, show us your dress when you're done. Post it on Instagram. Do hashtag sewing report squad because I would love to see your dress and maybe some pictures of your reunion. 
Eva says, four girls, grand supervised, each have chores. I trace my cousins, cut, granny checked all my mom, pin, all right, your aunt made sandwiches. That sounds like the best part, Ewa. I love sandwiches. Have your aunt come over to my house and we can make sandwiches because I would definitely eat them. Oh, that sounds good. I could really go for a sandwich right now. I don't know if I'm like overly tired or something. I just feel kind of out of it. So I apologize, but this is really fun and I'm glad I'm glad we were I was still able to do this today. So I am excited. Vicky says probably a chalice or a batiste. Sounds like a good choice. I like it. Two thumbs up, Vicky. And I also wanted to let you know that the prom mug is back. So I think I'm going to have the, my prom mug in every episode of the live show. And if this is your first time watching or you don't know what this is, when I was in high school, I went to the prom by myself. And uh, obviously they had, like, my prom theme was the Brian Adams song, Everything I Do. Um, you know, that song is like, everything I do, I do it for you, or something like that. And um, it, even that song was a little outdated then. Um, but, you know, I don't know why we chose it. I think we had a vote for prom song. And I went rogue, and I wrote in that I wanted um, the prom song to be Smash Mouth's All Star. Do you remember that song? It was a really awesome, funky song. I wonder what happened to Smash Mouth. Uh, but that was my favorite song at the time, and it did, it did not win. Um, I think the other choices were some Eric Clapton song or something, and I don't even remember what the other one was. But apparently enough people voted for Brian Adams that that was chosen. So there were a bunch of... Um, so the girls got champagne glasses and the guys got these mugs. But since I went without a date, um, and there were like other people that went stag at the table or went without a date, I ended up getting the guys mug. But I don't regret it because I think the champagne glass would have broken uh, because champagne glasses are so, like, delicate. So with this mug, you know, I can... It keeps drinks cold pretty well. And, uh, yeah, I love these, like, little, like, you know, chintzy, like, you know, what was this, the year? Two, 2000. So that tells you how old I am. And uh, the graphics are very, like, you know, very late 90s, early 2000s, so um, this is a good reminder for me of high school. Um, I wasn't particularly a fan of high school. Um, I was a pretty big dork, and I didn't have a ton of friends, but you know what? Whatever, because I'm not there anymore, and I think when you get older, you realize high school really doesn't matter that much, so that's okay, but I, I love this prom mug because it is a good you know, hokey souvenir from, from that time. Um, so yeah, oh, and you know what else? All right, I'm gonna read some of these comments, okay. Marie says, it wouldn't be a sewing report without your prom mug. Yes, I know this is super weird, but I like this prom mug. For some reason, I just like it, so I, I've used it, I've saved it. I don't know why I've saved it, I probably should have thrown it away, but it's still here. And he was says, food in my family is just a must. Yes, it is. Food should be the center of everything. And Vicky says, from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Awesome. And Lisa J says, my mom never bought a pattern. She would make her own patterns from newspapers old, and old wrapping patterns. Allison says, designing clothes is a bit overwhelming right now. I know I hit, a, hit the spot when it catches my emotions. Just like when you see a painting and there's always the one that puts the entire story behind it. XOXO. Lisa J says, dorks rock. Yes, they do. And if you are a high school watching right now, make sure to be nice to the dorky and the nerdy kids because the ch chances are pretty good that when you get older, they're going to be like a bazillionaire in Silicon Valley, um, you know, like Mark Zuckerberg. So make sure you're nice to them because a lot of the people that I knew in high school that were considered dorky Super cool people now, very successful, very nice, um, but you know what? High school is a pretty tough time for everybody. I did not enjoy my time in high school, and I will come right out and say that. Um, college was a little bit better than me, for me, um, but overall, I don't know, being in your teens, I don't know, it kind of sucked, it kind of sucked for me. So, it's all right. 
Shakira says, sewing means cutting my fabric with a tape measure, chalk, and scissors, and applying my sewing techniques. Awesome. And he says, high school is just a silly memory. Strong personalities don't have many friends. Me too, I have few, and for 30 years and over. Lisa J says, dorks and nerds are the ones that will change the world. That is totally right. And Cynthia says, do you ever feature things your husband make on your live shows? Cynthia, there was a live show a few weeks back where James made underwear. And actually, I'll have to go find some of James' sewing projects. He does have a few, so... Um, and I think on our website, we do have some photos of, um, actually, you know what, in one of the, con actually on my old blog, I think I've got some picture of some pictures of some of James sewing projects. Uh, I think the first thing James made was a, he, we used some Ikea fabric and he made like a pillow cover for one of those Ikea down pillows. And we still have it on the couch. He's sleeping on it right now. He's taking a nap. Uh, he made me a purse. That one, he he actually used a magnetic uh, magnetic snap, but he put the lining inside out. But I give him an A for effort. It was actually pretty cool looking back, especially for someone who didn't really have a lot of sewing experience. Uh, he made a pair of jeans. The jeans came out pretty good, but the fabric he used was probably not the best choice. And one of the seams ended up ripping open, and I don't. I think he was sort of able to fix it. But I think his fabric choice wasn't quite right. He used stretch denim, and I don't think he pre-washed. I don't think he pre-washed the fabric either. Um, he he didn't know. And then he also made a quilt for his niece. Um, so he he did that. He did start making another quilt top, but he never ended up finishing it. And it's still in a closet. It's definitely a UFO. So he's made quite a few things, and he also made a few cases. Like he. Um, made his dad like a case for something out of like black canvas. So um, I think James's strength is he doesn't rely on patterns. He designs things himself. Um, oh, and he also made his mom an apron. So he tends, the jeans he did use a pattern for, but everything else he's made, he designed, he came up with the concept and he went, he went for it. Um, so He's very good at, I really need to use patterns for most things. Sometimes I can sort of wing it, but he's one of those people, he almost doesn't like to look at things online. He just likes to think of something, he just likes to think of an idea in his head and execute it. Um, so he's a lot more out of, he's a lot more of an out of the box thinker than I am. All right, Allison says, college is a battlefield. It created my own little borderline field. How, that is so, so true. Shelly says, hey, hey, Shelly, and Shelly is, Shelly saves the day, she's a friend of mine, she's kind of new to sewing, but she's excited about it, so, uh, for, for people who know folks like Shelly or someone who might be interested in sewing, encourage them, be sure to be as helpful as you can, because we need more people out there that sew. Allison says, never doubt that a small group of committed citizens can change the world, in fact, it is the only thing that ever has. Allison, that's awesome, and you know I love your I, I love your way of thinking. And Vicky says choosing the right fabric for a pattern design is probably the most important step. That is, and that took me a long time to learn. Cynthia says that's so cool. Sewing men are sexy, that they are. And if you have a guy in your life, you know why not have them sew too? You know it's really, you know, well, I don't know. Like I know sewing is typically considered, you know, women's work. But why not for the guys? You know what? Let's break those gender barriers and have sewing be an activity for everyone. I think everyone can benefit from sewing, not just not just women. He says, I was so shocked in the UK. Are there are a lot of men that sew, and there's a page on Facebook of what men, what women make for her followers. I see the most clean studio ever today, and with a, and there was a man cave with an amazing fabric stash. I would like to see that. That sounds pretty cool. Vicky says, my son sews and does embroidery on an embroidery machine. Vicky, your son sounds like a keeper. And you know what? I've been telling people, have their sons sew because women will, you know, later on, women will appreciate it later. And it might be a good way to, uh, you know, um, entice the ladies. Because let's be honest, it is it is kind of sexy when a guy can do stuff around the house. Um, if they're not very useful people, you got to ditch them. Because you know what? A guy that can't do anything or even just a partner that can't do anything, that's not very appealing. 
if they're, you know, if they're not, if they're not willing to learn things or do things or tackle things themselves, that might be a red flag to you that uh, they they might not be very a very helpful partner. All right, Heidi says, in times past, men were the tailors, and that is true. So there are a lot of tailors out there, although um, I really feel like I, I don't know if it's just me. It does seem like it does seem like there are fewer and fewer people who are sewing, and I think that needs to change somehow. All right, Champagne Twist says men wear clothes too, so they should learn to sew at school. I think that's I think that's a good point. Eva says you can use newspapers for patterns. We use them them to make. You will laugh these days with what little you can sew. Only now it's a big industry. Vicky says he has made costumes for conventions and skirts and purses for his friends. Vicky. Your son sounds awesome, and if anyone else watching has maybe a daughter uh, that's looking for a nice guy, Vicky, you should give them your son's phone number. I don't know how old your son is, and that might be totally appropriate, but if your son is 16 or older, um, I'm sure there are lots of young ladies out there that would that would lo that would love to that would love to get to know him out there. Just trying to help make some love connections here, you know who knows. Um, so that's awesome. And, and you know what, here's another question for you. Um, if you have gotten advice from someone like your mom or your grandmother, what's the best What's the best advice someone has ever given you about sewing and quilting? So if you have, if you have someone that maybe you learned from your grandmother, what's something they taught you about sewing or what's the most valuable lesson you learned from them? Because I would just love to know, I'm just curious and I just like to know what, what other people have learned from folks in their life. All right, Heidi says the Great British Sewing Bee had a man, a man one season. I think I saw that guy. That's pretty awesome. And Vicky says most of my seventh grade sewing students are sewing drawstring bags. See, that's good that you are, Vicky. You are single handedly maybe helping to change some pe young people's lives. That's very cool. Seventh grade boys, awesome. So, and you know what? I think teaching young people to learn how to do things with their hands. It's something that will serve them well later in life. Um, I think it's, of course, I think it's important to learn things like math, science, reading, you know, language arts, uh, social studies. But I do think learning to do things with your hands should not be a discounted skill at all. I think it's just as important as learning, you know, learning stuff from books. As book learning, learning things with your hands is very practical. And you know what, it gives you a, it, you know what, it really gives you more independence uh, because you're not relying on other people to do things for you. All right, Vicky says, most of the sewing techniques I learned uh, from grandmothers were hand techniques. That is great. Um, and you know what, I will say I don't do a lot of hand sewing, but I, I really appreciate hand sewing. And I, you know, if I have more time, when I have more time, I would like to try it more, like uh, Carolyn Freelander's needle turn applique techniques. I'd love to try some hand embroidery, but you know, it, there's just there's just not a lot of time as it is. But that's something that I would really be interested in. And Vicky says sewing is applied math and science, and you are absolutely correct. It's you know because there is a lot of math and science and trying to figure things out with ca different calculations to make things work for sewing. And Eva says my uncle was a tailor. And would always say, following every new design in magazines are um, are not to be a trend, but how you make clothing and how women wear them. So yeah, it's more about the fit than the style. Um, if your clothes fit well, they'll look good on you. But no, no matter how trendy an item is, if it doesn't fit you well, it's it's not going to look good on you. All right, uh, Tashia says the best advice I have received is to be patient, and when something gets too hard, put it down and come back in three days. I think that's great. You know what? I think I might, uh, I might use that advice myself, and I would agree. Sometimes when you, when you're getting frustrated with something, sometimes it's better just to leave it for a while and not just keep trying to plug away because you'll get impatient, you'll start getting frustrated, and sewing when you're mad and frustrated is not is not a winning combination, not at all. All right, Allison says, I write stories that are very emotionally driven, and from there I design the clothing I like to wear. I uh, even body, is that a spider web? Spider web? All right, and you are saying my name correctly. Most people add or take away letters. Yeah, I can see people mispronouncing your name and saying like, um, Taisha or something, but it's, okay, so Taishia. Okay, I'm glad I didn't totally butcher that because I'm really bad with pronunciations. 
Champagne Twist says, best piece of advice given, always buy a half meter more fabric than you think you will need. You can always use the extra for another sewing project. If you make a mistake, you have the extra fabric to spare. That's a good one there. Try tea quilt. Ewa says try tea quilting. It is a small uh, quilt for tea mugs or snacks. Uh, watch Debbie Shore's binding technique. She makes handmade binding look so amazing. No seams. You know, I've seen Debbie Shore's videos. I think they're great. Um, and Ewa, are you talking kind of like a mug rug? I've made a few of those before. And I think that's those are good projects. And actually, that's a good scrap buster. But it's a good project. Like, I think sometimes quick sewing makes are good because it gives you a small win in, a, in not a lot of time. Because um, sometimes when you're doing those huge projects, they just get overwhelming. You don't want to do them anymore. Oh, excuse me. And you feel sort of discouraged because they take forever. So yes, I agree. Sometimes doing smaller, quick projects are a good way to kind of break things up and give you that sense of accomplishment in between larger projects. Oh, Allison says she got a spinning wheel. Oh, that's cool. So Allison, I want, that spinning wheel sounds really neat. Very neat. So you make, do you make your own, um, do you like make your own yarn or your own fabric? Um, that's very cool. You obviously are an artist, which is more than I can say. So hats off to you, Allison, because that's great. So yes, if you're just joining us, this is the live edition of The Sewing Report. And uh, every Sunday around 3 p.m., I like to jump on here, talk to you live, answer questions, read comments, and we talk about various issues that are important to the sewing community. This week, we are talking about what sewing means to us, which is something that, you know, honestly, I feel like I don't take enough time to think about and really, uh, really ponder. So I thought it'd be cool to talk to other folks here about, uh, you know, what sewing means to you, you know, what kind of people, you know, who in your life has sewn and what they've taught you and what kind of lessons you've learned from them. Uh, because I think it's really important to learn from people who have more life experience than you. Oh, but I also want to say this too. Um, don't discount someone because of their age, uh, because even though you might be able to get talk to someone with more life experience than you, I really feel like everyone, no matter what their age is, has something to offer everybody else. Um, and I feel like sometimes younger people get discounted because um, their parents or grandparents might think, you know what, they don't know as much as me. What do they know at age 12? And I think that's the wrong attitude to have. Um, because when I'm, you know, and I've been guilty of this myself, but younger people are better at us than some, than in certain areas. Uh, and that's just the truth because, you know, they've been around technology more. They're around younger people. And younger people learn things really quickly. Um, I was talking to someone this week who's like 16. And she can grasp concepts and do things in a much faster time period than I could learn them. And I was really blown away by just how proficient this young lady can get at something. That, like something that would take her a few days to learn would take me months to learn um, in the same time frame. Um, but we were talking because she's interested in sewing and quilting. I know, yes, a teenager interested in sewing and quilting. And she was genuinely excited to try to, uh, to do something with it. Uh, so we were talking about that a lot. And, you know, I, it just made me really hopeful that there might be people in the next generation that can continue on our, um, our art form of sewing and quilting because sometimes it can seem a little dismal. Um, but there's hope because there are young creative people who want to try things. Um, we just need to, I think it's just important that we introduce them to sewing because a lot of people that might be, you know, say 16 to 24, they might not have ever been introduced to sewing. But once you introduce it to them, that's something they could gain an interest in. So I do want to say that, um, you know, if you do have children or grandchildren, um, don't assume, don't always assume that you know more than they do. Because I'm sure you do in certain areas, but in other areas, they're going to be, they're going to be beyond, far beyond your level um, for various for various uh, skills so don't be afraid to have them teach you what they know as well and I think really the lesson is that everyone can learn from each other all right Ewa says if you want to make a project like a bed quilt make a sale section and put it 
put on a clear box when finished. That's good. And uh, I, she likes to hang loose items on a hanger. That's also good advice. Uh, Allison says, I love everything about this channel. It is part of my world. Many thanks. Allison, thank you very much. And I think we might have a bad connection. All right. And Ewa says, you are right. Older generations are much happier to share. Look for youngsters. Make business and get paid. So I think I might try to finish this because I think our connection is kind of breaking up. Um, but again, to everyone watching, thank you so much, and I will see you next week.